Welcome to another episode of Wild Reviewer. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about the Fuji X-T3 settings I use for the Animus Ninja 5. So this is going to be a part one of two series on the Fuji X-T3 and Animus Ninja 5 combo. So stay tuned and let's get started. If you find this video helpful, please like the video and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. So one of the first things you want to do for the Fuji X-T3 is sometimes there will be times where you're busy, you know, trying to frame the shot, trying to set it up correctly or move the light. And then as you're doing that, the Fuji X-T3 turns off. So by default, the Fuji X-T3 actually turns off after two minutes. So my suggestion is turn off the power saving option and we'll show you how to do that. So to turn it off, just go down to the wrench, hit power management, auto power off is defaulted to two minutes and we're going to change it to off so that way the camera doesn't turn off and turn off the signal going to the monitor. Now I'm going to go through my video settings. In movie mode, I shoot in 24K or 23.98, gives it that natural look. In terms of the codec they use to record, honestly, you don't really need to care about it because when you're recording straight to the Ninja 5, these settings don't matter. The reason being is the Animus Ninja 5 has its own codec in the system. The codec you can record to is either ProRes, which is an Apple-based one, or DNxHD. So in terms of white balance, I leave it as auto, but I actually manually adjust it. I have two Godox Studio lights that are at 4500 Kelvin each. And so within the XT3, I just adjust the temperature color to 4500K just to match it up. So the rest of these settings like highlight, shadow, color, sharpness, and noise reduction, those are just my personal, personal preferences. Yours will vary different from mine. You can record the film simulation on both uh, the SD card and through the Animus Ninja 5. You can record F-Log and SD card and then have the Animus Ninja record F-Log. Or you can record this film simulation on SD and then through the HDMI you can film F-Log. Or you can have both HLG, which is the hybrid log gamma capture on both SD and the HDMI signal going to the Animus Ninja 5. So F-Log is a profile that is designed to get the most tonal range out of the sensor. This is great if you want to color grade or apply LUTs, what they call a lookup table in post-production. So you can see it's a bit flat, the color. HLG is hybrid log gamma capture, realistic images where there's a huge gap between highlights or shadows or subjects with high color saturation. So this is what, H uh, this is what the HLG will look like. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison between what the F-Log looks like and what the HDMI HLG looks like. And as you can see, the F-Log is a lot flatter in color. 
Now I'm going to go back in the menu and review the film simulation. I'm just going to quickly cycle through them. So if you look at the different colors, you can see how um, the color changes and the density changes of the color. So again, I'm just cycling through and you can play around with it on your own, but I just want to show you a quick sample of it. Now I'm going to cycle through the rest of the option list for my movie settings. There, I just changed it to F-Log for what I'm shooting because I'm going to be color grading my video. So here I'm going to talk about the tracking sensitivity. So you can set the tracking sensitivity to the subject, whether it's clicked or lock on. So I have the tracking sensitivity of one and autofocus speed at plus three. Here, this is the option for the autofocus. So you can kind of gives you a bit of a diagram showing how fast and slow it goes from negative five, zero to five. And here you're able to adjust the speed. So for my purposes for doing YouTube videos, uh, I want to make sure there's fast autofocus tracking because I'm moving in and out of the camera. So here's an example of the setting of one and three. And so here I am tracking across the screen so you can see that it locks on and then it focuses fairly quickly uh, for what I need it to do. The next thing I want to talk about is the face eye detection setting. Since I shoot, um, sometimes I shoot myself uh, in the videos, it's important that I have eye tracking on. So I have it set on eye auto. I have it set on eye auto so that it always keeps my face in focus. So as I move back and forth, you know, toward or away from the camera, it always focuses on my eye, which means my face will always be in focus while I am talking or, or demonstrating something on camera. So here you can see I'm moving in and out and you can see the box is tracking fairly good to my eye. If I move too fast and kind of loses tracking after a while and then it catches up like it just did there. So that's why I have eye auto set on, which is great for vlogging. So I'm just going to quickly go through these other ones. Uh, focus check is off. 4K movie, I have it going to 4K for both um, the SD card and the HDMI. And then full movie output, again, it's put full HD. I still have to research a little bit more about what these settings mean, um, but I just set to the highest possible setting for now. HDMI output info display on. Someone's connected to the Animus Ninja 5. If you have the display on, it shows exactly what you have in the camera. So here you can see like the f-stop, the shutter speed. You could see um, uh, the volume go up and down as well as my metering. So that's what HDMI output display shows. It shows the grid as well. And it shows the information that you would see through your viewfinder. And one thing to note is when you hit the shutter button to record, it doesn't actually work when you have HDMI output display on. You actually have to turn it off. So here I turned it off and it was just a quick video. As you can see, everything, there's no grid, there's no shutter speed. It's just the clean picture of what it would look like. I'm just adjusting the shutter here just to kind of demonstrate that nothing is showing on the screen. So that's what the HDMI output info display off for. I just do it to 4K for standby, HDMI record control on. So you need to have that turned on for you to hit the shutter speed to do dual recording to your SD card as well as to the HDMI signal. And the rest, I, that's about the settings and the tally light and the movie silent control off. All right, so I hope that was helpful to show you my settings. This is what you see when you first turn on. So here you can see the frames per second. So I have it at 23.98, uh, record 709. I have nothing output. The monitor is native to whatever is in the camera, how I set it. It's recording in ProRes HQ and it tells me how much time is left to record onto the SSD using ProRes HQ and then it gives me the battery here. On the right hand side is the audio level input. 
So this completes. This concludes part one of the Fuji X-T3 and the Animus Ninja 5 settings. Part two is going to talk about the Animus Ninja 5 settings I use for the X-T3 to record, as well as some tips that I have for you while recording with the Animus Ninja 3. So stay tuned and please subscribe so you don't miss out on that content. So thank you for watching and until next time.